Low construction site is complete without its fair share of tower cranes. And here at Media City, we're no exception. It seems that they appear from nowhere, almost overnight. And before you know it, they're in full swing. But it's not quite that easy, as this film will show. The team at Media City are about to erect TC-10, a saddle jib tower crane. And we're going to follow its progress through to completion. First, the project manager, with the assistance of the health and safety support team, have to consider a few things. What type of crane? Where's it to be situated? How high? What length does the jib need to be? What sort of base? How's it going to be built? And finally, how do we dismantle the thing? Something else that is really important, the paperwork. Apart from the usual method statements and permits, there are various stages throughout the crane erection where checks need to be undertaken, certificates issued, and signatures required. So we know where the crane's going, and we know the type of crane we need. But first, we need to expose the piles around which the concrete crane base will be set. The designs are produced and approved by highly skilled engineers, and enormous care is taken to make sure that the base is of the highest standard. At last, we can start digging. Well, almost. A permit to excavate must be raised, and method statements produced, and discussed with the excavation team. The site is cleared and an exclusion zone created. And although underground utility checks were carried out previously, the area is scanned with a CAT detector prior to excavation. The important safety word should always be foremost. So guardrails and safe access routes are put in place. Piles down to the correct height, blinding concrete is poured to give us a clean surface where we can build our steel cage. These concrete footings are where the crane base section will sit. The cage needs to be checked and signed off. And then preformed walls complete the structure. The base is backfilled and compacted. The first section of the crane, which has been positioned nearby, is lifted onto the footings. The crane base section anchors are tied into the cage. This is pretty critical, as the guys that will erect the mast have to be confident that the base is solid and safe. Our temporary works coordinator and the crane supervisor make the final checks before the concrete is poured. Tube samples are sent to the labs, where tests will be carried out on the concrete and reports sent to the temporary works engineer, so he knows when it's safe to proceed to the next stage. All paperwork completed, base construction thoroughly checked, the project is handed on to the erection contractor, in this case, HTC. The base has hardened off and the mast can now be built. After the lifting operations manager completes his pre-erection audit, raises a permit to erect and checks that the foundation approval certificate has been issued by the temporary works engineer. The erection team must not continue without the certificate of approval. We have to extend the original exclusion zone now that the crane is to be erected. The zone has to take into account the eventual height of the mast and the length of the jib. This is all laid out in the method statement. We've allocated an area for the mobile crane, tested the ground and checked insurance documents. This crane is pretty high. It's not going to be freestanding. We're going to tie it into the core for stability. 
The ties will be fitted to steel brackets, which will have to be fixed into the core at the required height. Wooden formers that mark the location of the brackets are removed. The steel brackets will have to be checked and approved by the temporary works engineer. The crane sections are delivered and inspected by the erection crew. Careful attention is paid to the pins and retaining clips. Mobile cranes, like all other types of crane, operate under strict guidelines. If the wind is too strong, work stops. As each section is lifted, the slinger banksman and operatives on the mast guide it into place. Locate the feet, hammer home the pins and check and confirm that the securing devices are fixed and in place. The erection team, although they may have a head for heights, make sure that harnesses and safety equipment is worn at all times. Now the mast has reached the height where it is going to be tied into the core. We fixed the yellow tie collar to the section when it was on the ground, and now we can lift it into its position on the mast. Tie legs are assembled to their approximate lengths and prepared for lifting. Before the ties can be fitted, the brackets on the core have been inspected and approved by the temporary works engineer. Our site engineer checks the tower is vertical and relays his findings to the crew so they can make adjustments to the ties before fully tightening the bolts. Now that the tower is tied into the core, we can finish building the mast up to its final height. The A-frame and slew ring are lifted into place and secured with high tensile pins and retaining clips. Followed by the cab. The counter jib is next, being raised off the ground and checked for balance before being lifted to the top of the mast. A tag line controls the jib on the way up until it's placed into its catchment hooks and secured and the bracing bars attached. The main jib is assembled in the exclusion zone. Trolley ropes and safety rails are fitted and, like the counter jib, it's raced off the ground and checked for balance. The tower crane is slewed round, ready to fit the main jib, which is lifted and secured. Bracing bars are connected to the top of the A-frame, then the jib lowered to its final horizontal position. All retaining bolts, pins and tie bar connections are carefully checked. Counterweights are lifted into place. The hook block and rope are made ready, then hoisted up to the jib where the fitter will complete the process and set limits ready for weight tests. Before testing, the supervisor will carry out an inspection, including all connections, ballast, ropes and anchorage points. The crane's built. A bit more paperwork needs to be produced. The erector's inspection and handover certificates are issued, and the lifting operations manager completes his post-erection audit. Before we can commission the crane into use, there is a little more work to do. An overload test is carried out, so the crane can be certified. An independent engineer completes a report of thorough examination. And the management audit is finalised. Routine checks will be carried out until the crane has finished its work and is finally decommissioned. So there we are. A great deal of work and preparation goes into the erection of the tower crane. They don't just appear by magic. And although exclusion zones may seem to be a real nuisance, they are there for a reason. Not to make everyone's life difficult, but to keep everyone safe and out of harm's way. TC-10 is now fully operating as one of many tower cranes on the Media City site.